uh, welcome and thanks for coming. Today I'm going to talk about design methods uh, for companies, um, product designers and startups to help them design more sustainable products and services. The focus is on the um, information communication technology sector, ICT and Internet of Things, but the methods work for other sectors as well. Um, for a start, a little bit of background. So in 2013, I started working with a management consulting firm in the ICT sector, which was focusing on product development. And back then, the IT for Green movement was just becoming more popular. Uh, and everyone was talking about how certain Internet of Things technologies could uh, generate a lot of sustainability impact. For example, connected car solutions could help develop cars that drive more fuel savingly. Or smart home solutions uh, could nudge homeowners to save energy. Or cloud computing solutions could virtualize certain physical processes. Um, and um, an organization called GESI estimated that the um, potential savings uh, potential of ICT solutions to save greenhouse gas solutions would be 20%. So basically, in a scenario where you would use ICT to its maximum effect, you could save 20% of the greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to the base scenario. Um, and that's a major contributor to um, the effect of resource decoupling, basically uh, enabling business growth without growing the resource usage as well. And so I thought when I started in that company, that's great, uh, everyone will obviously want to implement these solutions. But what I actually noticed was that in most companies, sustainability um, was moving far slower than expected. Um, and that's for several reasons. Of course, there's a lack of incentives for employees to think about sustainability. There's a lack of government regulations. But the issues that really um, that I found really interesting was that uh, in corporate, sustainability was generally seen as a cost creator, so it costs money. And it was also seen as something that you do afterwards to compensate for your bad products. So what was really needed was a change of thinking from let's compensate for the unsustainable things we do towards let's actually fundamentally change we, the way we do business. And from let's make financial sacrifices to be more sustainable, uh, to actually capture new business op opportunities and become more innovative. In other words, what was also needed was a shift of thinking from what I would call Horizon 2. Many companies were just thinking about uh, being more environmentally friendly in their operations within the company, let's say printing double-sided. And they were not at all thinking about the products and services they would develop. So uh, you would even come across rating uh, methods which would rate a company that produces um, fuel-saving cars worse than a company that produces SUVs because the company that produces fuel-saving cars would pay better wages to the workers and print double-sided to continue the joke. Um, so what we thought back then was that actually we would need a completely different product development process. One where um, in addition to the dimensions technology, psychology and commercial, you would include the sustainability aspect right from the beginning where you can actually have the largest impact. And uh, back then I was looking at the typical product innovation process um, and we developed a range of tailored methods for sustainable product and business model innovation. And today I want to speak about two in particular, the sustainable business model canvas and the sustainability impact canvas. So the business model canvas, most people probably know it, it's very, it's very a standard tool developed by uh, Osterwalder originally, an academic, and um, it really forces designers of business models to think about all the relevant aspects of the business right from the start. And it's become so popular that it's not only used in the startup world, it's also used in companies, and it really became kind of a common language. Um, there's one problem with it, though, um, the business model canvas doesn't include many aspects important, which are important for sustainable product innovation. For example, what happens at the end of life of the product. So why is that important? Um, for example, to give you an example of what I often encountered, I would meet employees and companies, mid-level employees, who would say, I'm very disillusioned, my work doesn't have any impact, the products I work on are meaningless. That's not very surprising. What was surprising to me was this came from, from employees who would work on really interesting products which would in theory have a lot of sustainability impact. For example, connected car solutions to help lorry drivers save more fuel efficiently. So they simply didn't think about these aspects. And so 
Um, we started back then to adapt the standard business model canvas towards this one, the sustainable business model canvas out there in the world. There are a few other versions of this one as well, but this is that, the one we came up with where, for example, we um, take into account the end of life, we take into account subsidization, um, and at the top, I will talk about that later, we take into account the positive impact of the business and also the negative impact. Uh, later on, I will talk about how that uh, process can be used in practice. So it became really a tool to make people aware of the sustainability aspect of the business model and the product right from the beginning where they could have the largest uh, effect. Uh, secondly, what I noticed is that even if people thought about sustainability, um, they would often only look at the positive impact. So, for example, someone develops a car sharing solution, of course they think uh, people will stop buying and owning cars and they will come to actually use uh, shared cars. Um, or, for example, someone um, sells shoes in the BOGO, buy one, give one model, and they would give shoes to people in need in Argentina and they think that's it and that's really good positive impact. What they didn't think about so much was the negative impact. And only if you actually do an honest accounting, take into account the positive and the negative impact of your solution, can you actually develop real sustainable solutions. And so we came up with the sustainable impact canvas, which works like this. So you have two sides, the positive impact, which you want to maximize, and the negative impact, which you want to minimize. So for example, you want to minimize the resource usage of your technology on the first level, the technology. The second level, um, is the application of the technology. For example, you want to optimize the energy usage. At the same time, you want to minimize the induction of additional resource consumption. So uh, people in the topic uh, in the area call that the Jevons paradox, when sometimes you generate a product that stand alone uses less energy than the product it replaces, but because many, many more products of the same type are being produced, the total energy consumption is much higher. And also you have the third level, the societal impact, where it comes about uh, changing of behavior through, for example, nudging. Um, this tool, um, we developed a number of example cards for each area for users to simply um, remind themselves which possible impacts could be generated in each of these six fields. And then the sustainable impact canvas can be used actually to feed and generate the impact for the sustainable business model canvas. Now, um, how does that best work in practice? We found that the best way to use these tools actually is to use them in sort of a game setting. So we developed the sustainable uh, business uh, model innovation game, which is based around, uh, around 40 cue cards. So each cue card shows you a particular sustainable business model. So this one is the product as a service model, uh, which is, um, I used to work with Rolls Royce when I was much younger, they developed the power per hour concept, so you don't sell a product anymore, you just sell what the person really needs. So rather than selling a washing machine, you sell a wash, uh, for example. And for each of these business models, it shows you the positive impact and the potential risks um, it gives you an example of a company that has uh, successfully implemented this model and it shows you where in the sustainable business model canvas this can be used. Um, so then you just um, take this empty canvas and you distribute all these little cue cards amongst the team and then in the team you discuss these cue cards and you see whether any of those could be relevant for your sustainable business model canvas. And that's actually quite popular and uh, is a lot of fun to do. Um, so now what with all these tools? So um, you could say, of course, with all these tools, we generate the, the, pos the, um, the popular uh, benefits of sustainable product design. So we reduce costs, we reduce risks, and so forth. But actually, what, uh, what drives that uh, application most is the fact that sustainability drives innovation. So. As you often say, necessity is the father of invention. You could actually say sustainability is the father of invention. Why? Often, um, sustainability is a boundary condition, so it's a constraint. What does a boundary condition do? It forces you to focus and look uh, at a new problem, at a problem from a new angle. 
And there's an actual um, causation between companies who are uh, implementing methods like those um, and how innovative they are. It's not just the correlation. There are studies confirming that. So, um, and now, um, well, um, all these tools um, I offer uh, for free download on the website 3 You can download the canvases. You can download the instructions. You can download the game with all the cue cards. And if anyone is interested, um, we are very happy to partner with organizations who want to use them. Um, so if you're interested, just come and talk with me. Thank you.